commu communities together who have heretofore uh, wished not to collaborate. So the, I'm not I interested in specifying which of those communities need or, or, or should be assisted in that way by the General Assembly, but it seems to me that when we're all done, um, to order some of these mergers and just think that they're going to happen like that because we say so um, is unrealistic, and it seems to me that we could, we are entitled to express to the General Assembly our insights as to additional legislative um, response that might be needed to assist some communities. Um, so I just am saying that when I consider something like this, I hope we, at the right time, will consider uh, making a statement to the General Assembly about some of these needs. It's interesting because in, in this case, um, too, they, they actually have come up with articles of agreement. Um, so I think they're in a different position than some of these other mergers, they that they have been working together through this and, and did have a, a, a close vote. and. Um, have had some of those long conversations about compromise with articles of agreement. And I think um, what may be most helpful for this region is they're both uh, want to make sure that their high schools are viable. Mm -hmm. And so what language would need to be in their articles of agreement to make sure that those fears um, aren't realized. So I think they're in a, in a little bit different place. But Peter? Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that. Um, as, as much as the, uh, the uh, agency has helped districts understand and uh, help them um, go through this process of, of doing what they had to do with Act 46. I think that I think the heavy lifting is going to come afterwards, as, as John's speaking to. And if it's the legislature is going to do anything, they should fund the agency to be able to help support these in, the, in this transition. Uh, that's where the, that's where the heavy lift is going to be. And uh, I don't see how, how, how it can be done without uh, agency support. Then could you speak to what the, the plan is from the agency's point of view as to um, how to, to move forward and, and, and to make these mergers successful? Yeah, I think it's, uh, at this point we're uh, really focused on just supporting the board's deliberations and until the, the final plan's uh, determined, it's hard for us to uh, anticipate that, though we are spending more and more time thinking about what it's going to be, uh, what's going to be necessary. Um, you know, I think, you know, as an observer to the first part of the process and as a, as a consultant that worked with districts in the front end of the process, that I think it no doubt will take a partnership uh, between our, uh, you know, our other agencies and our other organizations such as VSA and VSBIT and VSBA. Um, but we're going to have to uh, figure that out pretty quickly and um, be, be equipped uh, to provide the necessary technical support from the AOE's perspective. Okay. Stacy. Hear what John is saying. Um, I think it's dangerous for us to signal moving the timeline as stated out, set out in law. I think that's a. I think that could send some mixed signals to the field, and I like the idea that we're looking at how to support it happening. But I think that that is confusing. The legislature had a calendar. They had November 30th that as a date. They had July 1 as a date. I, I agree we, we want to look at what's practicable, but I, I think there's something I'm con I would be concerned about signaling that we would be moving around dates when communities are trying to figure out what's expected and what to do next. Oliver? I'm going to agree and disagree a little bit with uh, uh, what was just said here. Um, I, I think it's important that we render our decisions based on what's practicable um, and not necessarily what's practicable on July 1st, 2019. Um, but I do think that, um, I, I do think that there is a lot of merit to, uh, uh, to the argument that we might want to recommend to the legislature that some sort of structure be put in place to move the implementation dates out to give uh, these districts a little bit more time to, to get it done right. And I think some districts are going to be able to, to do it, um, but even under the most optimistic scenario, July 1st of 2019 is a, that, that's, that's pretty aggressive. And we have to remember that, you know, the law was written several years ago and while well, legislators had the calendar in front of them, 
Um, you know, my recollection is a lot of the emphasis, a lot of the focus was on the sort of the voluntary phase, and I think in the, in the later phases of the law, you know, some of those details may not have may not have come to bear. And and now, as we're hearing from districts, um, and we're recognizing some of the challenges that may exist out there, um, I, I think there's a lot to be said for making a recommendation of the legislature. But at the same time, I, I think it would be a mistake to. Um, to let that date sort of alter our own decision making. Uh, Peter. Just for clarification, uh, with 261, we do have latitude on SU formation. Yep. So, so just to clarify. Mark. I, I, I was going to say something, but Oliver, you said it at the very last thing that you said is we have, we have a process that we've been following for a number of years and that everybody else throughout the state's been following. And we can make all the strong recommendations we want once this process has been put to bed. Um, and, and duly noted that July 2019 is right around the corner and that that's something the legislature should take up. Um, but we've we got to make sure we don't confuse that with, with our work to be done. I just want to bring up that um, the Vermont School Boards Association did come to us. And, and that's why we have been trying to add extra meetings to get this done as early, um, earlier the better, and so that's why this provisional votes is to help give the message of where we're moving, so we'll have a final. Um, if you remember, the Vermont School Boards Association asked us to add some extra meetings, and, and we responded and we did that um, to try to move this process, because we are in the middle of budgeting season. Yes? Yeah, and, and on to that point, I, I've actually been really encouraged just with some of the news reports and studying some of the minutes of recent meetings um, that in many cases the school boards are, I, I think, they're, they're taking these provisional votes as sort of a cue to, to get things organized, and I've seen several examples where they're doing just that. So hopefully that will ease this transition. Bill. Just a clarification question on Franklin Northeast and Montgomery, mm -hmm. which Montgomery gets into the mix, and the recommendation on Montgomery is that it goes into a unified union school district with Enosburg and Richard. Mm -hmm. Now, they seem to be different structures, or they're not. No, which ones? So, Mon so Montgomery? Yeah. Um, Montgomery is the same as Berkshire and Bakersfield. Um, it's when they did a vote, Bakersfield and Berk um, Berkshire voted the affirmative, and that was what's now Northern Valley Mountain USD. Um, and they're a K through eight, and so is Montgomery, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, and so is Sheldon is a K through eight. And so they surround, it was a K through eight island around Enosburg, which is K through 12. And again, Richford, which touches Enosburg, is also K through 12. So the <coughs> K through eights have school choice and go to different, um, they go to Richford or Enosburg or other schools. Um, some go to Lamoille and some go to North Country. Okay. Yeah. That seems strange. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, um, so it's, it, that's where, from Sheldon, if you remember, some people are testifying that they then, some of them go to school at Missisquoi Valley. So this area has some traditional K through 12 with then the K through 8 and choice mixed in and the towns surrounding the towns that actually have the, the high schools themselves. Would we be creating a socioeconomic segregation by this kind of action? Um, so if you're looking at Enosburg and Richford, or if you're looking at the region? I'm looking at the region. And again, all of this is the spider's web that just sort of vibrates across the various towns. Mm -hmm. Dan, do you have any opinion on that? Well, I, I just think you know, let's take it one step at a time and just be careful about what districts we're talking about. I think you started your comments by suggesting that Sheldon was being recommended or Montgomery was being recommended to merge with uh, Enosburg and Richford. That's not the case. No, with the um, so yeah, I think if we just if we take this step by step, mm -hmm. um, keeping an eye on the whole composite, but take it 